your words will hang you, whether you know where you're going with them or not. How many times do you think you need to reproduce a flag in order for it to lose its meaning? Do you think it is even possible for a flag to be made insignificant by way of reproduction? I did a large portion, a very large portion, of dry mounting during my 22-year career as a custom picture framer. Dry mounting is the technique of affixing a poster or photograph to a piece of board by using a heated thermoplastic tissue as an adhesive. A large portion, a very large portion, of the items I dry mounted were posters featuring reproductions of notable paintings. I dry mounted the following three fine art posters so many times that I lost sight of the value of the masterpieces they represented. Red Poppy by Georgia O'Keeffe, The Kiss by Gustav Klimt, and The Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. I clearly remember being very disappointed when I finally saw the real Red Poppy at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in 1989. I, in fact, turned to my mom and said, it's so much smaller than the poster. When I dry mounted the kiss, I always needed to allow room above the top edge of the poster. This way, my colleagues in charge of putting the poster in the frame could over trim the area above the top of the man's head. Otherwise, too large a portion of the couple's elaborate robes would get covered by the frame. To this day, Every time I see the kiss, I think to myself, there is Mr. and Mrs. Overtrim at the top. The starry night was my dry mounting oasis. Although I observed careful dry mounting practices throughout my picture framing career, a dust particle or two did get trapped between a few posters and their dry mounting tissue counterparts. The swirly brush strokes that characterize the starry night hid them beautifully. In addition, when I visit the Museum of Modern Art, I no longer feel the need to seek out the starry night because I'd rather spend my stay looking at art I haven't seen so many times. Much like the world may never know how many licks it takes to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop, the world may never know how many times a flag needs to be reproduced in order for it to lose its meaning. The second half of my original two-part question is if it is even possible for a flag to be made insignificant by way of reproduction. Well, let's just hope we'll never learn the answer because there are two flags, the Confederate flag and the Nazi flag, with stories that no matter how despicable are more valuable to the preservation of humanity than any work of art.